Good day to you. My name is Peter Jordan, <clears throat> and in this session, um, or this video, I want to talk to you about the subconscious mind and um, the growing up um, in different positions in your family. In the previous um, uh, email, uh, previous email, in the previous video, video um, I uh, went through in quite a detailed thing. So if you were like this, then that, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and all of those are valid. But in this one, I actually want to uh, talk to you about um, showing it in a slightly different way from the subconscious mind what happens to the eldest child, to the middle child, and to the youngest child, and then also to show you now what are the issues that each one has um, on that. So all, all of the things that you've taken from the previous video in the detail, you can overlay onto this, but it is, I just need you to um, understand how does this work. So from the eldest child's point of view, from the subconscious mind, viewpoint of this thing when the eldest child is born okay then they are the only child that is born and in the situation of them being the only child they are the center of the universe and every time that it is that they go to sleep and they wake up there's always somebody around them to do something with them to interact with them to play with them to um, just enjoy them okay from their point of view looking out into the world it's kind of like well everything that they need is being done for them so you know when it is that they're born they look at mom and dad um, on that and they say oh boy these two are the ones that it is that I need to train Okay, and in training them, so I'll say, well, you know, mom, when I go, wah, there's kind of like something over here in my tummy that is empty and uh, it needs um, filling. When I go, woo, there's something sort of downstairs here. I'm not quite sure what it is, but, you know, like, would you mind sorting it out? And when I go, we, then it is I'm tired and um, I want to go to sleep. Okay. And this is the kind of interaction that they have with mom and dad. And mom and dad are trying to learn what it's all about looking after the child. And the child is trying to teach mom and dad about what it is that it needs. Okay, because it hasn't got the ability to communicate and etc. And etc. Cetera, et cetera, at this stage. Um, here. So this is how the interaction. So every time that they wake up, there's always somebody there and uh, they become the center of the universe. And it kind of like everybody is doing everything to stimulate them and to be with them and to encourage them and uh, play with them and hold them and kiss them and, you know, all the things that moms do. Okay. From the child's point of view, they are just lapping it up. Everything is there for them as and when they need it. As they become a little bit older, they start becoming uh, mobile, they start sitting a bit, they start interacting, um, crawling around. Um, and, they, and then what happens is, is that mom and dad now um, go and visit friends, okay? The friends are most likely going to have small children also because this is the kind of social circle that you that you um, go into. And uh, when they see other little children, they say, oh, yes, and off they run and they go and play with other little children and they interact with them and, and they go and do all sorts of fun things and they laugh and, and, and et cetera, et cetera, uh, on things. After a period of time, they get told, well, come little Johnny or little Pammy or whatever it is. Okay, come, we have to go home now. So, okay, bye. And then off they go. And when they get back home, it is they are the center of the universe again. Everybody's interacting with them. Everybody is there for them. Whatever their needs are is all being met. Then there comes one little day. And there's another one that arrives there and they think, oh, well, you know, children, other children, they come and go. After a period of time, they notice that all 
all of the attention of them has gone on to this little one and this little one is not going anywhere this little one is staying here and how come and all the attention of mom and dad has gone on there and then they will look at this and say hey mom and dad remember me we used to do things together remember we used to play and i was the center of the universe and etc etc on this thing and this is the thing that they experience every eldest child goes through this experience where they suddenly notice that this attention moves on there okay and then they feel left out they feel that they're not quite included okay despite all of the efforts of mom and dad to try and include them it is as that will the whole focus of attention remember from their point of view from the subconscious point of view the whole focus of attention was on them okay and now it shifted there's now two of us and what's more this one is supposed to be the elder one this one is now the big boy or the big girl okay because now it's two years or three years later and the other one is over there and after all you now a big boy or big girl and you can now cope okay so when mom and them notice that it is that um, the eldest one is not feeling part of the journey then it is they say well okay come little johnny will you help me will you please bring me the soother yeah, in some countries they call them the dummies and other countries they call them the soother <clears throat> please bring me the soother please bring me the diapers please bring me this and that and off little johnny runs and he goes and uh, gets these things for mom and then mom comes back and says ah oh, thank you Johnny for doing this for me you know you're such a star I really appreciate this and then suddenly he looks at this lot okay or she looks at this lot and says, oh but this is different if I do things for other people then it is I get seen heard acknowledged from mom okay i'm thinking that i'm now helping mom and as this happens more and more from the subconscious point of view it is that mm, this starts to develop a pattern in me that i now have to start to do things for other people so that i can get recognized so this doing for other people is our first tissue now remember it's not just necessarily in the order that I'm giving it to you. Sometimes dynamics change in, in, um, in the home is that other people come into the home as in a new re, uh, reconstructed family or that um, somebody has died or that somebody's become injured or something's happened and the order changes, okay, on the thing. So it would be that if the eldest one would be perhaps to die, um, or become in, incapacitated in some way, then it is the, the it shifts onto um, the, the the second child, and the second child then gets a combination of being the second child and being the eldest child. So it's not a hard and fast rule, but it is it's a general guideline. Okay, so. So they now. <clears throat> um get the idea that they've got to do things for everybody else okay now they become a little bit older and um, let's say that um, the new baby um, the second one is now just learning to sit okay and uh, just rocking a little bit but not quite um, have, have have got it mastered um, just yet so mom says is that uh, to little Johnny or Pammy, I'm just going to go and make some lunch or some tea or something. Okay. And just keep an eye um, on your uh, brother or your sister. Um, and um, I'll be back. So he's sitting there and he's rocking a little bit and then lose their balance and they fall back like that. And they, ah, and they bump their head and a big cry and the fright and all that. Mom comes running around the corner and says, what happened? Says, well, you know, he just fell. He says, but I asked you to keep an eye on your brother or sister. 
in that but I asked you uh oh it is I need to be responsible for other people okay so that's our new tissue I need to be responsible for other tissue and so this happens again and again and again because it's a natural process that happens in every family in the thing that happens again and so this becomes more and more entrenched in on the first ball okay from this point of view what happens next to say well you know now both of the toddlers are uh, walking about and say we take them to the supermarket so you, mom is busy with the trolley or dad is busy with the trolley and gets to the top of the aisle and says just stand here by the trolley i'm just going down the bottom there to go and get some cheese or milk or bread or whatever it is okay and in the meanwhile the youngest one is standing and looking around and they see some toys over there and say ah oh, that's interesting off they go they off they go to the toys and in that going to the toys down there they've gone mom comes back and says Where's the youngest one? Oh, well, he's down over there somewhere. But I told you to keep an eye on that one. Okay, now from this point of view, they realize, oh, 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 if I don't tell them that it is that they cannot do these things, then it is I'm going to get into trouble. And so the eldest one learns that they need to take charge of the younger ones and tell them what it is that they can do and cannot do okay one thing and so when it is that they tell them what it is that they can do or cannot do and then they turn around and say but mom said that it is that you can't go there or you can't do this or that whatever it is okay um, on there that they said is that you can't do this okay so it is through this process they learn to take charge and they learn to control okay because if they don't take charge and they don't learn to take control then it is they are the ones that get into trouble so in order to prevent them from getting into trouble they then say no you can't do this and you can't do that and etc etc okay one thing as they get a little bit older mom would often say is that well i'm busy go and take your brother or your sister and go and play okay while i'm busy making dinner or i'm busy whatever go and play or go and watch tv or go and whatever the thing is and as this happens more and more then they learn it is that they need to look after other people okay and this is a common thread with the eldest child they've got to look after other people and do things for others okay on the thing now of course in order for them to do all of these things they've got to start relying on their own instincts of things and as they rely on their own instincts they learn to think for themselves they learn to do various things for themselves and they are the ones they are the the eldest one i'm talking about this is the one that is the pioneering type of um, of, of child okay that they go into something that they know nothing about but it's stuff it is that they just have to learn to do and learn to um, resolve and get on with with things okay on the thing so now we've got two we've got the eldest child and we've got the youngest child now another one comes along and when the other one comes along now it is the middle one that was the youngest child now becomes the middle child so i want to hop over onto the youngest child and then i'll come back to um, the middle child now of course all of the attention is now flowed from the second child okay who was the youngest child uh, on the now onto the third child and all the attention goes on to the third child and <clears throat> from the eldest child point of view it says ah oh, i know what needs to happen okay and i need to do all of these things that i spoke about earlier in order to help with the um the newborn baby 
Okay, okay. Gradually, this newborn baby becomes a little bit bigger and it starts to be sitting and it starts um, to walk and crawl. And now the eldest two tell the other one about well, no, you can't do it like this. You got, you don't do it like that because it is, you you know, don't be silly. Don't do it like that. This is the way that you got to do. And this is the way that you have to do these things. And this is the thing, how it is um, that you do this or you solve that problem or you do whatever, whatever. Okay. And as they get older and older, the eldest two, because of the age gap, the eldest in particular knows a whole lot more about the world and the functioning of the world and about the home and the functioning of the home than what the youngest one does. And so the eldest one, from the parent's point of view, is being relied on more and more to help the, the, um, the youngest one, this is the third born, to help them to learn their functions and learn their speech and learn their everything else. Okay. Now, from the youngest one's point of view, from the subconscious point of view, is that when they arrive on the planet, well, there's always somebody to do things for them. Okay. One thing. And everybody is willing to help them and everybody's willing to show them and everybody's willing to do these things for them. And in a way, they want to sit back and allow these things to happen, okay, and allow people to do things for them. Because if everybody's doing these things for them, then it must mean that these other people love them and want to do things for them, okay, one thing. Now, from the subconscious point of view, from there, the third um, child, <clears throat> they look at it <clears throat> and they see what, you know, I've got two children slightly older than me that are telling me what to do. But actually, these two don't really fully know what parenting is about. But they're always telling me what to do and how to do things and when it is I can do things and when it is I cannot do things. Okay, so they are subject to a lot of criticism in their growing up years. And it is largely because it is these many things that they don't know that the elder two, in the process of going to school and interacting with the world and etc, etc, that they know so much more than what the third child is. On top of all of this is that the parents often look at this and say three is enough. Um, and, and I'm not going to um, have any more um, children. And, you know, this is the last child and shame. This is the baby child and the other two are getting bigger. And, you know, we need to look after this one and we need to protect it a bit more. And, and you know, the other, the other two um, sort of occasionally gang up on, on, on this one because this is now the new um, comer to the, to the family. Um, and they... Um, in this ganging up um, on there, they're always criticizing and putting down the third child. And as they criticize and put down the third child, because the child simply doesn't know, and they say, no, don't be silly. It's, it's, um, you don't do it like that. You do it like this. Okay. okay. From the third child point of view, they look at this and they say, but, you know, I've got um, the eldest child has got uh, two parents. The middle child has got three parents. The one just older than them, well, doesn't quite know exactly what they need to do and what parenting is all about, but they can be very bossy. Okay, on the thing. From <clears throat> the um, youngest child, the youngest child has now got four parents. They've got the two elder children plus mom and dad. Okay, then everybody there is telling them what to do. So the third child is subjected to a lot of criticism. Okay, and a lot of um, a babying and a lot of protection and, uh, and all that because, you know, it's the youngest child and shame. Um, 
you know they they're really struggling with with the elder two sort of knowing a lot more than them and all of the protection things just naturally bubble to the to the to the fore okay I think. so the youngest child is subject to criticism and um, so much so that many of them will do things or not do things um, avoid doing things in favor of somebody else doing it for them okay because this is the thing that they are used to so if they stand back a bit then they hope that somebody else will fill in the situation for them that's one scenario another scenario is, is that well if i'm going to do something i need to make sure that it is that i know how to do this thing 100 percent because if i don't do it 100 percent then it is it's going to subject me to being criticized so if it's going to subject me to being criticized and i don't know it 100 percent then i'm going to avoid doing it okay and that avoidance and that sensitivity to criticisms are the issues that generally come up a lot with the third child okay now i want to slip to the middle child and the middle child is the ham in the sandwich they're kind of like they're not the youngest one and they're not, um, they're not the oldest one the eldest one has learned to take on responsibility and to do things and it is as well mom is busy with the um, the youngest child then it is they would say to the eldest child please take the middle child with you and go and play okay and so they go and play and then the middle child is sitting there thinking well who is it in the world that actually loves me? Who is it in the world that actually wants to be with me? And what do I have to do to be seen? Because the youngest one is getting all the attention. The eldest one knows everything that they, and they get the attention um, to go and, and be responsible and to do this and to check up and to look after and to everything else. And they get this and the one in the middle is the one that says well what do i have to do to be seen and to be recognized and to be loved and to be accepted just for who they are and so they learn the things that they have to do things for others in order for them to be accepted they have to put in the extra effort they have to put in uh, and they have to do things in order for them to shine or they have to become naughty in order for them to be seen okay so the elder the middle child is the one that now can go one of two ways and those ways are either the middle child becomes the star performer and in that star performance they are the ones that get recognized they are the ones that get seen because of their academics they are the ones that that they do all these things and they get recognized um, very well for them the other side is, is that they then decide to become the rebel okay and the rebel is that when they rebel and they rebel for they are a rebel without a cause they are just a rebel for rebel's sake and when they are this rebel for rebel's sake they are doing that so as to get attention for themselves okay something so the woundings of the middle child is specifically they are the ones that have to put lots and lots of effort into things in order for people to see them and to recognize them now it is that they take a lot of this into relationships and the relationship is they are the one that have to put in a lot of effort in order for the relationship to to work um, and, and that's often the wounding of the middle child now, as I said, when I started the video, that this is also a fluid um, um, dynamic and it can change. Okay, if there's only two children in the in the family, then you have the eldest and the youngest child. If there is an only child in the, um, the, the, the family, then it is they never get challenged by any of the other um, siblings in the normal growing up they never learn to put boundaries in place they learn that they are always the center of the universe and everything operates around them and that's a a lovely position for them to be in 
in the first early parts of the years. But when it is they become much older, it is that they, because of the focus on them, just for who they are from from the parents, it is that they end up now having to carry the burden of happiness for mom and dad. And that is often the tissue that it is that they need to do. And then the other issues around that is that they, um, they are learning, <clears throat> um, oh, sorry, they, they, they don't learn to share. They don't learn to interact. They don't learn to accommodate. They don't learn to put um, space. Um, in place with those sort of around um, and people, okay? Um, um, the only child is a very difficult child, but it's also a very special child um, that we have because that specialness, that that um, ability to be on their own, their ability to um, cope with um, their own, um, to cope with being by themselves, um, and that is a it's a very unique kind of of um, ability, um, and that we we need people like that on the on the planet. All of these situations we need we need because each one brings that the youngest child is also the one that is the peacemaker. Um, they're the ones who can see both sides of of a argument, and they're the ones that look for ways to bridge. The conflict um, on that the, the middle child often gets gets that too, but not nearly as much as um, the third born child. So each position has got its own uniqueness. Each position has got its own qualities, um, and, and um, each one is to be recognised on that. And just by way of interest, there's that there are surveys that have been done over the years that um, in marriage. You'll find that the eldest child marries a younger child or a second born child. Very rarely do you have the younger, the eldest marry the eldest child because of the nature of the conflict. Is that if the one is being in charge and taking control and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and to have another one who wants to be in charge and taking control, then it is this ends up in a lot of conflict, and so that moves away. But when you've got, uh, let's say, the uh, the youngest child interacting with an oldest child, is that they are used to the eldest child taking charge, taking um, on it, and you know, if the eldest child is looking after them and being responsible and doing everything else for them, they love that and they interpret that as a way of love. And of course, that is not love. That's the subconscious process that is working out between these two um, people. Okay, so I thought that I'll throw that in as a matter of interest. 90% of all marriages involve the eldest child or the eldest type archetype onto the second or the third um, child. You, of course, you do get, get um, other ones in between, but they tend to either be prob problematic or that something else has happened in the dynamic of the of the family. But look around and you'll see, you'll see that, that a lot of this and you'll start to see how and why it all takes place. Thank you very much for um, listening to this. Um, and I want you to see this as, an, as a different aspect to, to the one that I spoke to you about on that. But the two are combined together. Thank you very much. Do have a good day. Bye bye.